My name is Eloise Adams. Today I'll be talking to you about how farmers can manage flystock sheep in Australia. I chose this topic because I grew up on a sheep stock farm and have witnessed heartache and opportunities that it has brought to my family and surrounding farms. This is a big issue that has been talked about and is currently being studied by the CSIRO about what can be done. Flystock sheep in Australia are more common than they need to be. Many farmers farm the Reno breed, which is a breed of sheep that has thicker wool and more skin that folds into wrinkles. This causes warm, moist places for flies to lay eggs and for maggots to grow. By phasing this breed of sheep out will cause less susceptibility to flystock sheep. The musing of lambs includes cutting flaps of skin off the buttocks area to avoid those areas producing wrinkly skin. Musing is done without any pain relief. Pain relief should be used as a short-term solution when performing the painful procedure such as musing. Sheep are highly intelligent and often underrated. They are highly independent from birth. Sheep are referred to as a ewe, which is a female sheep, and a male is referred to as a ram. Babies are called lambs, and if the lamb is castrated, it will be called a weather later in life. Sheep are extremely good at problem solving. They can tell when they are sick and eat certain plants to self-medicate them. Sheep are often found in a herd or a mob, and they have 320 degree vision, which is often used to protect themselves and others in their mob. Some of the key findings from my research is that costs can exceed $280 million annually from flystruck sheep in Australia. These costs include chemical, labour and the time it takes for the infection to clear. Often for the farmer, this is th there are production losses including loss of wool, value and sometimes even death. Crunching and shearing help cause susceptibility to flystruck, but treatment is also essential. Early season treatment works effectively to remove the animal and as a resource to the fly. Early season treatment can be enhanced further if all sheep on the farm and nearby have been treated. Late season treatment is just as important for the welfare of the sheep, which helps reduce numbers of flies in the area, contributing to a great prevention method for the following season. Though musing is a type of prevention, it is an unpleasant experience for the lamb and can be traumatic without any pain relief. Pain relief while doing painful procedures is a short-term fix for the problem. A blowfly can lay up to 500 eggs at a time. The fly lays eggs within 20 hours they become larval, which we refer to as maggots. The pupa is very similar to a butterfly's. The maggot stops eating and starts its transition stage into a fly. This stage is only about five days before becoming a fly who can lay a new batch of eggs every four to eight days. This topic is so important because it is about animal welfare and significant health and welfare risks. Animal welfare should be a priority. The problem also causes production loss and reducing of profits from products, making it a big topic for discussion. There are different solutions for the problem. Some immediate solutions include improving management of affected sheep and by doing so, this speeds up the recovery time. Whilst musing and other painful procedures, it is important to use pain relief. The identification of affected animals need to be identified sooner, which will help improve the treatment process and the welfare of the affected sheep. For long-term solutions, the CSIRO are looking at breeding out the merino breed so that the sheep are less susceptible to becoming flystruck. They want to manipulate the insect to reduce the population and understand the host and parasite relationship to a better degree. If something isn't done, sheep will continue to be lost from the cause of flystock. They will be lost at a higher rate because without treatment, flystock sheep will cause death. It is a costly disease for our farmers and country, costing over 280 million annually. Being that Australia is one of the largest producers of wool in the world, it is important to get on top of this issue as soon as possible. Thank you for listening.